So when I yeah. did it and you were gone. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I totally forgot how to do that. <laughs> hey, good morning. Hi. We had a battery issue with our camera, so we're running a couple minutes late. I didn't want to work without one. No. <laughs> Looks like we're going now, though. Yes. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. We got to do that, too. Make this quiet just in case. Captions are auto generated, that tells me. So that's good. So, welcome to the middle of September, Tuesday Q&A, or just A? Just A. No <laughs> Q's, nothing but A. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, no questions, so conversation, Q and C. Conversation. Yeah. So, Malachi. Malachi has been fun. Why? Why Malachi? Why did why did you why did we pick Malachi? Hi Shane. Sorry, I just got distracted by what was on the screen. Oh. Shane says hi. Hi Shane. So I'm gonna say hi. Hope you're doing well. I talked about you a little bit yesterday. Well, I referenced you. Not by name though, I didn't tell anybody <clears throat> it was you that I was talking about. Maybe I did, I don't know. You just talked about him. <laughs> <clears throat> So Malachi, yeah. Why Malachi? Um, why Malachi? That might be something to ask God because he's the one that did it. He stuck it there. Um, yeah. I was, well, when Joe and I were talking about doing a series um, through this month, we were talking about you know, different ideas of family ministry and um, next generation stuff. And I happened to be reading through Malachi at that time. And so it all kind of got smashed together. Mm -hmm. um, and so Malachi is not necessarily a, here's your instructions for reaching the next generation kind of book or anything like that. But it definitely says a lot to the world that we're living in today. Um, I think it has a lot to say with the way we, we can tend to coast in our faith and when we do that we we pass on a weaker faith mm -hmm. to the next generations and so malachi was really a challenge for me uh that i wanted to share with people um we need to take our faith seriously and live lives of integrity that match the faith that we claim if we are going to pass anything worth passing on to next generations. Uh, and that, that isn't only a family thing. Right. Um, I talk about that in the context of family because making disciples is a a life on life endeavor and we don't have access to anyone else's lives more than we have access to our families. And so it starts there for sure, uh, but it definitely doesn't end there. Mm -hmm. So. So that kind of led us into the book of Malachi, and uh, yeah, Joe will cover the last two chapters next week, and I went through the first two this week. I would say I kind of skimmed through, because we didn't really dig into yeah. a lot of, Yeah, there's a lot of pieces there that we could have uh, really sunk into, um, but that was our week, and so we wanted to get through the, the bigger picture part of it. So so I have a quite So I'm going to do this to you. So I, you right. said something a minute ago. Um, you said Malachi is not necessarily an instruction book about passing on the faith to the next generation. So... Um, is the Bible is the Bible an instruction book? I think the Bible is an instructive book. Um, but like when Malachi sat down and shared what God told him to share, his intent was not a blow by blow, play by play, here's how you reach the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, 
actually his his account like what he writes really was more of a sort of a condemnation of the results of not yeah effectively passing on their faith to the next generation and i would say as far as the bigger picture of scripture goes it is definitely an instructive book but very there's a lower percentage of scripture that was written with like we're sitting down to write out here is how you and when i think of instructional i guess that's what i think of like if i'm going to read an instruction book um maybe the bible is an instruction book because nobody reads instruction books Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but if we think of an instruction book we have like step one step two step three step four and then you have a bookshelf um that's not what scripture is i don't think i think scripture is a lot of different types of literature brought together um, it's instructive in that if we pay attention to what all those different types of literature have to say and we follow the instructions, we follow the teaching that is there, then I think we will learn and grow and the outcome <clears throat> of that will be the life that God calls us to. Um, but it's not... a uh, insert this tab into this slot and slide these pieces together and then out comes a nice baptized bookcase of your life um so i just i just thought it was yeah. really cute like i one of the things and i'm not going to say we're not going to do this at the end <laughs> of the video because it seems like whenever we do this together we drill down to like the same thing mm-hmm. um but I mean, it just it's just like I feel like Christians in particular, um, and I don't know why it wouldn't be Christians because they're typically the ones who are reading the Bible. I think Christians in particular tend to look at Scripture as though it were an instruction manual. So I'm going to go to this, and it's going to tell me what to do in any given situation. And there are times where we see that. But primarily, that's not that's not the purpose of the Bible to necessarily tell me how like it does tell me how to do things. But that's really not the overall purpose of of the Bible. So I need to then be careful when I read something in the Bible that might be telling me to do something. I probably need to think about that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think. I think a part of what the early church did really, really well is they devoted themselves mm. to the apostles' teaching. Yeah, um, it wasn't a we're going to listen to the apostles for this time period. We're going to know everything that they had to teach us, and then we're done. Um, sometimes that can be our approach to scripture. I'm going to read through it. I'll read this part. I'll read this much a day, or whatever. And then I've I've fulfilled that obligation that I have. And I think we miss out a lot Mm -hmm. that way. Uh, When we go to scripture, um, we need to be open to whatever instruction God has to give us there. Mm -hmm. But if if I go to scripture to figure out how to do calculus, I'm going to come back pretty frustrated because it's not a calculus book. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah i think we need to let scripture form us and we need to be able to go to scripture with questions looking for information looking for instruction um but i think we need to be careful of what our expectations actually are Uh, i know when i was a kid or somewhere along the way we saw that acronym for Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. Which also got turned into a song. Yeah, yeah. And that, to me, that just reduces scripture to so much less than what it actually is. Mm. Uh, and so I, I, don't, I don't tend to talk about scripture as like, here's our 
manual for life. Uh, here's our instructions. Um, as much as kind of here's our invitation maybe into a relationship with the God that can bring us into the full life that we can't find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Which is a different way to look at the Bible. Yeah, and I'm just, what... I'm just thinking how different actually is that. Um, in my mind, it's, <clears throat> it's pretty different um, than just an instruction manual. But maybe for some people, that distinction is not as clear. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So then we want to be, when we read a book like Malachi or any book, then we want to be careful to like, here's, here's my, here are my, like my instructions for the day are this. And I, so I say that as someone who for the last, for the last six months has been, has been reading through the Psalms. Yeah. And like, I'm look, I know, I know Brenda Sewer is on here right now and maybe a few other people are on here who, who watch that. Right. And I'm sure there have been times where I have approached that as, okay, so I'm going to read this Psalm and now here's my, like, here's my, like, instructions and mindset for the day. And it sounds an awful lot like kind of what we're talking, I don't know that we're talking against it, but a little cautionary that it's it's not that simple that I'm going to read this text and then I'm automatically going to know what I need yeah. to do with that based on what I read. And I think <clears throat> I think Malachi is one of those things that is not necessarily on the instructive side of things. Yeah, a lot of what he said was more corrective. Yeah. Which I know maybe is that the same thing? Not necessarily, but maybe it's similar. Um, Malachi wrote to a specific time period of the nation of Israel, God's chosen people, who seemed to have forgotten what they were chosen for by that point. And they were frustrated because they were living as a nation, like, they're trying to rebuild themselves and and sort of reassert themselves as an independent nation, only they weren't an independent nation. They were still uh, sort of captive in their own homeland, um, subservient to Persia, and they were frustrated by that. And so, like, where is our God? We rebuilt the temple, we rebuilt the city of Jerusalem, but, you know, like, we heard the stories from our grandparents of, like, m their grandparents with Moses. Um, you know, he built the tabernacle and the cloud came and filled it. And the cloud led them around day by day and, and the fire, the pillar of fire led them at night. Where's our fire? Where's our cloud that we can see to follow? Uh, what God wants us to do to become the prominent nation again. Um, when, when Solomon built the temple, again, it says the glory of the Lord came and filled the temple. And our grandparents, we grew up hearing these stories about how God filled the temple and how awesome it was and it was amazing and great and everybody was prosperous and everything was awesome in our nation. And it's not like that anymore. Why not? Where is our God now? And that was kind of the situation that Malachi was writing into. And, and he didn't, like even for them, he didn't write, uh, take these three steps and it'll yeah. all be back to, That's interesting. back to normal. We can use that phrase now. Um, the new normal. That's not where Malachi was heading. He was directing them towards something different. Uh, and, and Joe will get into a little bit more of that direction this week. But Malachi was saying, look, you're not, you're not living by the covenant that God established. You're, you're skirting the rules. You're offering garbage sacrifices instead of 
the best that you have to offer to God, why would he show up for that? Why would he appreciate that? You're not doing him any favors. Uh, I remember times when I've had some conversations with people that were frustrated with their own lives and they were frustrated that things weren't going better because I'm a decent person. I don't cheat things. I do my taxes. I go to church at least a couple times a month. And, and they felt like God owed them something because they generally did things well and, and right. And they, they showed up at church once in a while like they're doing God a favor. And that's really not doing God a favor. Um, God, God wants our best and deserves our best. Um, and that really has nothing to do with, with church attendance as much as how we're living our lives. But again, Malachi, um, he acknowledges the, maybe the desolation that they felt and the desperation that they felt. Where is the God of justice? And he holds up a standard for them to live up to um, that that would have been a repetition of what Micah had taught. You do justice. Mm-hmm. Love mercy and walk humbly with God. That's what God requires <clears throat> of you. And as we do that, Micah or Malachi uh, again points them to a future time where God will be evident and even present in an undeniable way. Um, But in the meantime, his correction for them had to do with how they treated each other and how they thought of God. Because that really was what their their insignificant sacrifices were really a, a testament to what they thought about God. We don't think he's really involved. We don't think he really cares. It doesn't matter. They would even steal someone else's some, whatever. Yeah, I really like the way you talked about that on Sunday. And that was something that really popped up just that, that moment on Sunday morning. Um, Mal- Malachi says, you steal someone else's offering and then bring it as your own. Why would God be interested in that? Mm-hmm. Why would he bless that? Uh, and that just that one to me is like, how could you expect to try to skirt around the letter of the law that way and and have the heart of the God who made that covenant with you and your people? Um, it just seems almost bizarrely asinine to me. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you think that would be okay? Right. And yet, we can we can be pretty similar in what we offer to God and, and the attitude that we have when we think of him as a, a far-off God that's not necessarily involved in the day-to-day. Uh, and, and that really is what a lot of our next generations are rejecting, um, that sort of deistic... God started things, but then he just kind of walked away and he's letting it go. He, he watches maybe, but he's not really that engaged anymore for whatever reason. Well, the next generations are increasingly aware of how messed up our world is. And the results of the sin that runs rampant are very evident and they have... 24 hour news cycles telling them the consequences of sin all over the world all the time they don't frame it that way they don't call it results of sin but the brokenness that's the brokenness that is all around us um, is the result of sin and when next generations encounter a church that is sort of marginally giving what they can um, conveniently 
to a God that they think of as, you know, the man upstairs that doesn't really interfere with all of us down here, they reject that. Guess what? I do too. Yeah. Um, I think they should reject that. But I also think that the church needs to provide a clearer picture like Malachi did here of who God really is and what he really deserves. That was quite a rant. <laughs> you said, yeah, like you talked a little bit about you talked a little bit about the in, like the interaction between the people and God. Uh huh. So, for instance, but you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? You've shown contempt by offering um, defiled sacrifices on my altar. Then you ask, how have we defiled the sacrifices? Like I think, like. One of the things that I like about the way Malachi has has written this is you can hear those questions being asked by the people. And I also wonder if they were asking it in that same way. Like you kind of likened it to, hey, God, I go to church twice a month or what, like, sure. like whatever that looks like. So these common objections and like one of the things that I... I like about what Malachi does in this text is he doesn't skirt around the issue. He says, so when you're wondering, like, I don't know if they actually said that. My guess is they, they didn't just like us. I mean, we, when we, we frame or people frame, we, we frame our calling out to God and demanding his action in the ways that you described. Hey God, I pay my taxes. I do these things. What gives? Yeah. And we wouldn't probably come out and say that, but that's yeah. that's how we internalize it. Um, and then I also, when you were talking about how, you know, our the next generations are keenly aware of the brokenness. Of, like if you just look on Twitter, we are constantly told how crappy we are. Yeah, I mean, we're constantly being reminded of the sinfulness of man and you're right our culture doesn't doesn't frame it up in that way and if we as the church if we don't have a solution yeah i mean that's worthy of rejection right and i think that's where we have an opening right now at this moment in time at this moment in history um we have a wide open door to say yeah we reject that too and here's what's better about Jesus, um, and and Joe is gonna. I don't want to stomp all over yeah. chapter three and four, yeah. but uh, in chapter three and four, Malachi <clears throat> begins to redirect their attention away from, you know, here's how God has loved you and you've missed it. To here is how God is offering hope. Yeah, um, even though you keep missing it, uh, and. Even though we keep missing it, God is still offering hope for a world that is desperately in need of hope. And he does that through the act of the perfect sacrifice that was made once and for all in his son. Um, To kind of get back to the instruction idea, I think sometimes we, we go to scripture wanting instruction on what does God want, like... And I think that's that's appropriate. God, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? Um, what is your will? And I think scripture in, in the New Testament, Paul describes, uh, he advocates us going through the action of offering ourselves as a living sacrifice. And then you will know what the will of God is. Uh, If you want to know what God's will is, if you want to know what God wants, offer yourself to him and he'll show you what he wants. Uh, And and I know there's a lot more that was wrapped up in that idea that Paul was saying, but I also think it really is as simple as offering ourselves in relation to God, in relationship to God, and allowing him to direct us. 
primarily he does that through scripture. Um, but he also does that through each other. Right. He also does that through, through a lot of other means. Um, so in a non-instruction manual way, God has given us a set of instructions that are less about specific A, B, C, do this, do this, do this, and more about who who we are and identity yeah, kind of a thing of, I mean, I like the way you said, be justice. Like if you, you, you keep saying, you didn't exactly say this, but you being God speaking to the people, you say you want justice. Well, then go do it. Then go do, go do justice. Be the, be just, be the justice that you want to see. Or I'm sure there's some 2020 phrase that somebody, you know, far, far more eloquent could come up with, but that's really it. Like be the justice that we want to see. Yeah. And do that from a motivation of proclaiming Christ because that's who God, that's who God is calling us to be. Yeah. And I think that's who the world is crying out for us to be as well. Right. Um, Because we are, We are the means by which he is now reaching out to the nations. Right. Um, One of the things that we didn't really talk about here was how um, God is kind of coming down on them for how they have defiled and dishonored his name. And in the process of doing that, he says, these other nations that you look down on because they're outsiders and they're not involved in this covenant that I have with you, um, they are honoring my name in ways that you are not. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think sometimes sometimes we, we want to boil everything down to like we're the insiders doing what God wants and, and everybody outside is always doing the opposite of what God wants. And and that's just not true. God, all through Scripture, it's not just in Malachi, um, God points numerous times to people who were bringing honor to His name in the way that they were living His life, completely ignorant of His existence even. Right. Uh, which is pretty incredible to think of. Mm-hmm. You know, we... We honor God by how we treat other people. And even if I don't know God, when I recognize value in someone else's life enough to treat them right, which a lot of people do, then I am honoring that person's creator. Right. Even if I don't think that person has a creator. Uh, And I think stuff like that really is an open door for us to sort of be like Paul. Uh, When he was in Athens, he said, I see you have this idol to a God that you don't know. Let me help you know him. Mm -hmm. You know, we can see people caring about others that are different from them in great ways, in meaningful ways. Even though they don't know the creator that makes those people worth loving. Right. What if we could help them know them, know him? That's, That's really what we're here for. And we're, those are the themes that we're going to be talking about next week as we finish out Malachi. Yeah. And we're going to be tugging on those threads in October and into November as we talk about entering, as we talk about God, what is it like to be in God's kingdom for the, for the election series that we're going to do. So you're going to tug on the threads. I thought you were going to yank on the chains. I'm, I'm not sure what <laughs> metaphor I want to use. I, cause I, I think these are, I think, I think when you dig about six inches down from the things that we just talked about, you get into some really heavy, yeah, like some really heavy and challenging topics. Yep. 
I mean, the way the way I describe what you just talked about, you know, about especially when we see people who aren't followers of Christ doing things that honor God, the way I describe, and I I have no idea where I I so I stole this phrase. I don't know where I got it from, but I mean, I have neighbors that are more moral than me. I have non-Christian neighbors that are more moral than me. And, like, you can interpret that in lots of different ways. Um, <clears throat> because we know as Christians that morality doesn't, like, that doesn't count. Like, that doesn't, that, that does not mean that the people who are more moral than me that aren't Christians are saved. Right. But it does mean that they, I have neighbors who are more honoring of maybe people's humanity or the fact that they were others were made in the image of God, like they probably do a better job at that than I do. Like I have neighbors that when someone cuts them off, they probably don't think the thoughts that go through my head. That makes them more moral than me. It doesn't make them justified, right? But it makes them more moral than me. And that's a tough like that's a that's a theological conversation. And that's an uncomfortable conversation to have. Um so yeah, so rip yeah, not tugging, not gently tugging. <laughs> Probably grabbing and like like I've done that before where I've grabbed and like if I had something I remember I bought a pair of shoes one time. Mm-hmm. And um and I'm still in the like I just paid for them and I'm at the store and like the tag was through the shoelace. Aww. And I did something so dumb. <laughs> I reached out and I grabbed the tag and I <laughs> yanked it and I completely like the shoelace just came undone oops I think that's what we're going to be doing during this season during during our series on <laughs> on politics so I have to remember that metaphor um, and just talking about that because there are some really uncomfortable things um, that that this political climate is causing us to deal with yeah, I think one of the great challenges that we have in our country is how do we love, and I think this was a subtitle of some book that you yeah. posted something about, how do we love people that have different political opinions from ours? Right. Um, and I would say in the church and outside of the church, how do we love people that think differently than us? Mm-hmm. So that'll be, I'm excited to hear how you go through that. <laughs> And pull those threads. Yeah, I'll be. I'll be. I'll say. I'll, I'll say. I'll be gentle, but I'm not going to be. <laughs> um, thanks for watching today. Um, we appreciate your time, giving up your time to interact with us, and we would really love to interact with you with questions. Yeah. So if you have, and maybe you just like it when we sit here and rant um, and discuss, <laughs> but we would really rather answer questions. Um, Maybe they're afraid to ask questions because it takes half an hour without any questions. Right. (laughs) So thanks for watching today. Um, We appreciate each one of you. Um, We appreciate the things that you are doing for the kingdom. And um, we will see you on Sunday when we finish out Malachi. We want to remind you of the food pack in a couple weeks. Um, If you just look, I think it's pinned at the top of this very Facebook page on which you are watching. I pinned it to the top today. Please sign up for that. Let us know you're coming um, so we can make sure that we are able to pack all the meals that we want to. Yeah, we need to have the right amount of supplies and the right amount of space. So please, please, please sign up. Um, Mm -hmm. There's a link that you click. You put in your name and you put in the number of people and you put in your email. And that's it. It takes about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's an 8 o'clock slot and there's a later slot. Uh, We'll have communion together with everybody in between the two. Um, But yeah, please go and sign up as soon as you can, like right now, because the video is done. So you can do it now. You're already on the page. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all on Sunday.